Mm. Well, you've obviously thought about this a great deal and written on it a lot. And coming to your book, What's Wrong With Rights, we do seem to be living in an age where the talk of rights is endless, even to the point where you almost get a hint that some people think they have a right to be happy. It goes beyond the right to pursue happiness. It's a right to happiness. And then there seems to be an expectation that somehow government has a responsibility to make that right happen. Um, now, you've critiqued uh, the idea of abstract and absolute um, rights, which you argue can in fact be quite negative, socially destabilizing, even um, anti-freedom in their effects. So can you work us through your argument there? What's wrong with rights? Uh, so so uh, just with regard to your point about having a right to happiness, there was in fact um, an early version of a Bill of Rights in one of the American states in the 1830s that did actually assert that people had a right, right to happiness. Um, um, most Bills of Rights say that you, you have the right to pursue happiness <laughs> rather than actually having it. Um, um, so first, first of all, let's 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 say what's good about rights. Just before people, if, unless people, less people mis misunderstand that I'm all against rights. I'm not. So rights are really important social institutions for um, um, guaranteeing or protecting our access to certain freedoms and benefits. Uh, so um, uh, if you have a right to, to free speech, John. Um, and if I if I try and um, uh, infringe your right to free speech, you can appeal to the police and the courts and the law f for your claim against me to be um, uh, to be upheld. The point is this: rights are legal institutions, and they depend on a set of um, uh, legal institutions and police and courts to 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 make them effective. In the absence of, of social institutions, uh, you may have a moral claim against me, but but you have no right. Because uh, if, I, if I ignore your moral claim, um, then you have nothing to appeal to. Um, so, um, but the first thing to say is, as legal, um, as legal entities, rights are really important in securing uh, freedoms and, and benefits for us. Now, there are a number of problems I, I see with, with the way in which we talk about rights sometimes. And one of them has to do with the way in which rights talk um, often completely pushes all other moral talk off the table. So um, here's an example. Uh, seven years ago, you may remember um, uh, a couple of, of militant Islamists broke into the offices of the um, satirical magazine in Paris, uh, Charlie Hebdo, and shot dead ten of the um, mm. members, uh, ten of the um, um, editors and colleagues of, of this magazine. Why? Because um, Charlie Hebdo had published um, uh, cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad that they regarded as insulting. After the, the murders, um, understandably, thousands and tens of thousands of people got on the streets in London and Europe and no doubt in Australia too, to um, um, protest against these killings and to affirm our right to free speech. And I, I, I entirely agree with that. Uh, the murders had no justification at all, and our right to free speech, even to uh, uh, um, publish what other people find offensive, is, is really important in a liberal society. But here's my point. Um, I think that, that Charlie Hebdo had the legal right to publish insulting cartoons of the Muhammad Prophet, of the Prophet Muhammad, um, but I'm not persuaded that they should have done it because, um, um, morally speaking, um, we should, say th we, we should, we should um, speak truths that other people might happen to find offensive, but we speak truths because they're important, not in, in order to offend other people. And it's not clear to me, in, in publishing these uh, uh, satirical cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad, um, what good the editors sought to, to achieve. So um, readers of Charlie Hebdo are typically um, uh, militantly secularist uh, folk who would find it amusing to have the Prophet Muhammad mocked. Um, but the more important business of, of trying to build relations with French Muslims was not, was not advanced by that. It, uh, this wasn't an, an invitation to any kind of respectful conversation. It was a provocation, an irritation. So this is the general point that Charlie Hebdo did have the legal right to do what they did, 
but in my view, they had a moral duty to restrain themselves. Uh, and the point is this, that uh, in addition to rights talk, we also need duty talk, and we also need virtue talk, because what they were lacking was the virtue of self-restraint and the virtue of charity, which says that speak truths, yes, but don't deliberately provoke or needle or mock or insult other people. Uh, so rights are important, but they ain't enough. We also need uh, a wider range of, of um, uh, moral talk. I worry in my own country that rather than talking of cooperation and getting on with your neighbour even when you disagree, what we've done is set up incredibly complex systems and architecture around people's rights um, and obligations, uh, started with the Sex Discrimination Act. The objectives were laudable. I don't criticise them. But what we've ended up with is a system where we compete with our fellow Australians mm. for our rights. And it says it all, you compete for your rights, which means that a lot of people are going to have to lose. And no one talks any more of the nuancing of give and take and understanding and cooperation. No, I, I, I agree with that. And the, 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 the dominance of rights talk and the way in which it pushes other considerations like common good or um, uh, obligations to, to, to our neighbours off, off, the, off the table in the end doesn't serve the cause of rights because if you have a, a legal right, John, uh, if that's going to be effective uh, in the first instance, then you need people around you who, who are capable of self-restraint, mm. who are capable of respecting your right. Uh, and that means they need to have the virtue of self-restraint and the virtue of charity. So uh, if you're going to have uh, your rights secure, um, then, then you also need to have a, a society around you that has been trained and educated in a set of virtues or, what should we say, um, positive uh, characteristics, um, whereby they have the personal wherewithal uh, to respect your right. Um, so it's, it's clear to me that we, we, we do need to, to um, recover our, our ability to talk about uh, not just rights, but duties and virtues. And the truth is, I think that, that Anyone knows that we, we need such things as, as, as virtues. Um, we may not call them that we, because, we're, we're, we're all sh because we're still in the shadow of moral, moral relativism. We think that we don't have anything morally in common, so we don't call them virtues. We call them skills, perhaps, or character traits. But um, no society, no institution, no business, no university can survive without their members um, exercising things like patience, tolerance, self-respect, um, and, and these things need to be cultivated. But we, we're so, as it were, shy of acknowledging that um, uh, these, things need, th these moral things need to be cultivated uh, in public institutions. We don't talk about them. So we need to recover our capacity to, to acknowledge them and, and deliberately promote them.